Good morning, good evening, good afternoon to all stakeholders who are joining us from all over the world to the WISIS Forum 2022. We are live from Geneva and we are celebrating the final week of the WISIS Forum 2022. We have here with us WISIS Action Line facilitators. UN is an integral part of the entire WISIS process and we work with our United Nations sister agencies to implement the different action lines that form the framework of the WISIS process. I'll move on to my first invited guest. It's Mr. Timbani from FAO who implements the WISIS action line C7 e-agriculture. Good morning, Mr. Timbani. Good morning, how are you? Fine, thank you. How are you? I am very well. So, thank you for being here. Uh, you know, um, e-agriculture is such an important topic. You know, we have been hearing the ministers, head of regulatory bodies, other stakeholders talking about our great collaboration in e-agriculture. So, what were the challenges that you faced during COVID and how did you overcome them? Because we had to adapt so quickly, you know, and what are some of your plans for the future? The greatest challenge that COVID brought to us was to break the f uh, food systems. Food could stay on the farm and not go to the market. So that was also an opportunity because that's when we apply digital technologies to ensure that we resuscitate agri-food system and get the food to the farmers. So we quickly jumped in and helped with a lot of technologies that we can, get, we can offer. And data too was uh, one of the most pillars of um, uh, digital agriculture and e-agriculture. In the future, we are thinking of how to implement various robust digital agriculture systems to help our smallholder farmers participate in the agri-food systems so that they absorb the shocks of a similar nature when it happens. So we are in the process of rolling out a number of solutions, a number of projects that we will allow to do that. For example, FAO is implementing the hand-in-hand -hand platform that collects data from all the countries that are participating in the program to ensure the visibility of content of data, of production, of consumption, so that at least the marketing uh, or the agri-food systems remain stable. Thank you so much. And we look forward to uh, implementing the proposed uh, ICT and agriculture, e-agriculture track in WISIS Forum 2023 in collaboration with FAO. Thank you. I would now like to move on to Ms. Tiziana from UNSCAP. Uh, so UNSCAP, as you all know, is a regional commission and uh, the WISIS process is implemented at the regional level through the regional commissions. Uh, we have a great collaboration with UNSCAP. We do a regional review every year uh, with them. Uh, even during COVID, we had virtual uh, WISIS reviews and uh, UNSCAP has actually a resolution on WISIS. So can you please tell us a bit more about that? Okay, thank you, Kitanjali, and uh, good morning. Um, so as you said, uh, we have had the pleasure of a very productive partnership with ITU on the WISIS review. Our next one will be 29 to 30 August, so we're looking forward to that. And then, you know, in terms of the concerns that ESCAP has, um, I think the key one is the digital divide. Um, it has widened during the pandemic and as digital became default, so it also widened other socio-economic uh, inequalities and development gaps. But the good news uh, is that uh, last week uh, in ESCAP, we celebrated our 75th anniversary. Uh, so we are rather old, but still useful. And an, a resolution was adopted. Uh, and this uh, resolution has, I think, a very uh, strong commitment by governments to increase collaboration in digital uh, in digital connectivity and in digital transformation. And the resolution recognizes that the Asia-Pacific Information Superhighway Initiative could be a very useful platform for bridging the digital divide in partnership with uh, ITU and our UN family. So we really look forward to continuing to work with ITU and our UN family and really bridging the digital divide by 2030. 
Thank you. Thank you, Tiziana. Uh, the ministerial roundtable that was held uh, yesterday actually echoed the similar words where they said that uh, ICTs are no longer a luxury but a necessity. So we need a, a, a serious call to action through the WISIS process to ensure that the WISIS action lines are aligned with the sustainable development goals. Thank you so much. Um, so I have next with us uh, Mr. Denis Suzar. Uh, he facilitates uh, the action lines on C1, C7 e-governance, and C11 on international collaboration. Welcome, Denis, uh, from UNDESA. So, Denis, uh, what are some of the observations you had within the framework of e-governance, and what are some of your plans for international collaboration this year? Thank you, Gitanjali. Uh, we've organized a session on e-government uh, this year. Uh, and of course, as you know, COVID-19 tremendously uh, changed how governments worked. Uh, we've seen uh, many, many innovations uh, in the area of e-government. Uh, but of course, digital divides that uh, Ms. Tiziana Bonap has mentioned also uh, exist in the area of e-government. There are online services, but not everyone can access them. So that's, uh, that's one challenge. Uh, we've also started looking at how uh, cities are doing in addition to national e-government portals. So uh, what we are observing is cities are far behind, even though we see that hype about smart city. Uh, many cities are lacking uh, basic online services and there's lots of room for improvement there. And the last thing I want to mention is about the Internet Governance Forum. Uh, this is uh, related to C11. Uh, IGF is convened by the Secretary General. Uh, we are taking it back to Africa more than uh, 10 years now uh, in Ethiopia. It will take place uh, end of November. Uh, and we will be talking about the uh, SG's Global Digital Compact and other uh, issues that are high in the UN agenda. So thank you. Thank you so much, Denise. Uh, you mentioned smart cities. And this year at the WISIS Forum, we uh, initiated the first ever discussion with mayors, which was really successful. And we hope to build on it uh, for the next year, ensuring that smart cities are well integrated and they're providing um, a digital inclusion, a healthy smart city for all their citizens. I would now like to move on to uh, Smyrna from uh, UN Esqua. Uh, Mirna has also won a WISIS uh, Prizes 2022 champion for her project that she pioneered. So, uh, Mirna, tell, a bit, tell us a bit more about this project and, you know, uh, congratulations. It was wonderful. It's a, it's a very, very, um, a very difficult contest and you uh, won it. You had so many votes. So, thank you uh, for being here. Over to you, Mirna. Thank you. Thank you, Jitanjali. <clears throat> Actually, uh, the Arab Digital Inclusion Platform is an initiative uh, launched by ESQUA in 2020 and uh, was focused to on e-accessibility and digital accessibility, particularly for people with disability. Uh, within this project, we aim actually to provide the support to uh, policymakers at uh, national level by providing them uh, templates uh, adaptable temp templates on uh, building and improving their national uh, policy on e-accessibility. In addition to that, uh, we developed interactive tools in order to actually facilitate the uh, usage of these templates and uh, the application of these templates at national level. Uh, we also built uh, a, um, an online platform, which is actually, and we are proud of that, 100% uh, near 100%, 96% accessible by people with disability. Uh, this uh, this uh, online platform provides uh, people with disabilities with all uh, necessary resources, accessible resources, in addition to a private uh, section dedicated to intergovernmental uh, experts for uh, people with disabilities in the region to discuss and share common understanding uh, and uh, documents and uh, so on. 
so uh, by this actually uh, we launched the, the initiatives and uh, we are currently uh, conducting the national rollouts and we started with uh, selected member countries who are uh, currently using the templates that ESQUA developed in order to develop their national e-accessibility. And uh, the moment to launch this, uh, this initiative is very, uh, very critical and sensitive. It was during COVID-19. Uh, because, as you know, uh, people with disabilities in the Arab region are uh, among the most marginalized groups. And uh, with the pandemic, they become uh, more, uh, even more uh, marginalized. So this would help actually to bridge the digital divide, not only the digital divide, but the social and economic divide uh, with specific focus on people with disability. Thank you. Thank you, Mirna. Congratulations once again for your great work. Uh, we'll continue to work with you for digital inclusion of people with special needs, older persons, gender, children, youth. So uh, thank you so much, and we continue this great collaboration. Thank you, so thank you. I would now like to move on to Claire from UNESCO. Welcome, Claire. Thank you, Good Claire uh, is the facilitator for the WISIS Action Line uh, C10 on ethics, uh, ethical dimension of information society. Extremely crucial. We heard so many discussions and dialogues during the WISIS Forum uh, highlighting the ethical dimensions of information society. So Claire, what were the key trends you noticed uh, you know, during this COVID phase and uh, what are your plans uh, for the future? Over to you, Claire. Well, thanks very much, Gitanjali. Um, yes, in terms of ethics, um, I, I'd just like to mention one of the major milestones um, of UNESCO was the recent adoption last November of the Ethics of AI recommendation, um, which was adopted by 193 member states. And the, the recommendation lays out principles and policy actions looking at how we can develop an ethical AI which is based on, which is human-centric and looks at issues around sustainability. As we know, for example, AI, um, the data centers used to create AI are increasing, and this is increasing CO2 emissions. Um, we've seen a, a lot of uh, gender discrimination um, and racial discrimination coming out of some algorithms you, uh, based on faulty data sets. So we're trying to really um, make this well known, but also to provide guidance to uh, member states about how they can develop ethical AI. And as part of this recommendation, um, we have two uh, main tools that we will be developing. One is on an, an ethical impact assessment, and a second one is on an AI readiness. Because as we know, there are a number of countries that are at very different stages of uh, being able to access AI. As you mentioned, one of the issues is around connectivity. So um, we've been looking with other partners uh, through the AI interagency group that we chair with uh, ITU um, on you know, what are the different um, uh, baselines for different countries. Um, and we've, we've also established a group of early adopters who are interested in um, taking forward the recommendation. Um, as you know, there's, only, there's about 60 countries that already have national AI strategies, but they don't all include an ethical dimension, which we find very important. So this is uh, some of the work that we're doing, and, and we will be having a session on this dimension um, actually later this afternoon. Thank you, Claire. Uh, I'm sure this crucial discussion will continue. And uh, UNESCO is uh, uh, an excellent partner of the WISIS process, contributing uh, to ensure that we're not only forming information societies, but information and knowledge societies. So thank you so much, Claire, for being with us here today. I'd move on to the last uh, WISIS Action Line facilitator, Mr. Preetam Malur. He facilitates the WISIS Action Line C5 on building confidence in the use of ICT. Uh, cybersecurity. Uh, you must have heard uh, cybersecurity pop up in most of the workshops, the ministerial roundtable, the mayor sessions, everywhere. You know, the parliamentarians are requesting uh, capacity building in cybersecurity. Uh, so, 
you know, what are your plans for uh, ensuring that our VISIS stakeholder community uh, is aware of the cyber threats? Uh, what is the VISIS action line C5 doing? Uh, and what are your plans for the future? Uh, thank you, Gitanjali. So uh, there's uh, obviously a clear trend that, you know, not only are the uh, number of cyber attacks increasing, but the range and the nature of the attacks are also getting increasingly diverse. For example, uh, you know, as you all must have noticed, you know, there's a lot of buzz around AR, VR, the metaverse here, there's an exhibition space here. But uh, it was also addressed in most of the sessions, you know, uh, the issues such as, you know, the need for a proper technical framework uh, for uh, the metaverse came up several times. Uh, the need for guardrails, especially for children uh, who are already exposed to video games, which is the first initiation into the metaverse. That was brought up many times, you know, various kinds of abuses were highlighted. So that is something that, uh, you know, as the Action Line C5 facilitator, we will be keeping a close watch on. Uh, the second one, obviously, is AI, where you know uh, uh, we've addressed it in the past, uh, you know, past few business forums also. But here again, uh, the risks are increasing. You know, the concerns are increasing, especially when it comes to uh, critical uh, application areas such as health, you know, mobility. Uh, many of these were highlighted, including in the mayor's session. Uh, that's another area where we will be continuing to follow, uh, you know, the developments closely and highlighting them. And of course, there's always the fear of what is next. You know, uh, quantum computing, you know, there is a risk that uh, with quantum computing, many of the encryption technologies we have uh, may not be as robust as uh, we've thought them to be. So this is where we organized the Action Line C5 session yesterday on privacy preserving techniques in a post quantum world. So we had techniques like uh, you know, homomorphic encryption, uh, you know, uh, decentralized uh, privacy preservation. So there were quite a few of these that were highlighted. There was also this uh, importance of having you know, proper international frameworks uh, because many of these techniques used uh, cross-border transfer of data. Uh, so that's something that we need to talk about. So uh, uh, obviously, you know, as many countries uh, use, you know, emerging technologies as a driver for uh, the digital transformation strategies, uh, we count on the stakeholders in the business forum uh, to bring these, uh, you know, issues to the forum to our attention, so that we can, you know, act as a stimulus to facilitate global conversation on these topics. Thank you, Vidya. Thank you very much, Preetam. So as you all uh, heard, the WISIS process is a great example of digital cooperation within the UN family. We work with all stakeholders from all over the world to ensure that our WISIS action lines play a crucial role in advancing the achievements of the Sustainable Development Goals. Please keep following us and be part of the WISIS process. Thank you very much.